Welcome back to DIYHoneymooners.com. Today we're going to be hanging a pull-up bar in the garage. The New Year's uh, resolution got started a little late this year. However, we're going to watch me put it on the wall. This is the pull-up bar that we ordered from Amazon. It's going to go right in the garage, right exactly where we need it to. So I've got some extra 2x4s from our basement remodel last year. What I'm going to do is cut them down to size, secure them into the wall studs, and then secure my pull-up bar so I can begin to use it. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the height that I'm going to put this at. Easiest way I can do this, if you see the holes in the pull-up bar, I'm just going to set these on the wall, side to side where I'm comfortable, which seems to be about right here. Height-wise, I like it where it's at. What I'm going to do is essentially mark holes. Okay, so now that I have my mark and where I want it, which you can see is right there, instead of trying to hold that pull-up bar up and get an even mark somewhere else, which would not be level, I'm just gonna take that one mark, find the center of it, and I'm gonna draw a level line across. That's all I need. So now that I've got my level line on the wall, it's really just a temporary placeholder. What I'm going to do is measure the width so I can see the size 2x4s that I need to cut. So right here I'm at 20 and a half inches from side to side. Just so I have some flexibility, I'll make it a little longer. I'll make each of my cuts around 22. And I can see, height wise, I'm just over 12 inches, if you can see that. About 12, I'd say, and an eighth or 3 sixteenths. What that means is a two by four is not actually four inches, it's three and a half. So what I'm gonna have to do here, instead of having three pieces of two by four, I'm gonna have four. So I'll give myself a nice big rectangle where I can even this thing up on place. Okay, since I'm at home, uh, obviously most homeowners are not gonna have a full on contractor set up. So this is a good way to cut wood that it's not gonna get in the way, damage your blades, hit your driveway, anything like that. Take two boards and lift the board you're working with up on top of it. When you take your saw across to cut it, it won't come near your driveway. So I'm just going to go ahead and find my 22 inches from the end. I mark it with a V. You can mark it with a line if you want. I like a V because that point tells me where I need to be. Take a square. Get as close as you can to that point. Draw your line. Now, obviously, when you're working with tools, you're cutting lumber, safety first, protect your eyes. You get something in your eye, it is not gonna come out easily. You could get very, very hurt. As I said, I love this tool. You can hold it one hand, safety switch right there with my thumb. And I cut with the trigger. Keep your hands away from the blade when you're doing this. Keep plenty of weight balanced. Not like that, balanced. Perfect cut. Okay, now we're gonna find our studs so we can secure this wood in properly. Uh, what you're gonna see right here, because it's not painted drywall, we can see where they screwed before. Guaranteed that's a stud. You can see it clear as day. Now, a couple different ways you can find your studs here. One, you can get a stud finder. Uh, either do an electronic one where it has a beep when you go over it. I like uh, the stud buddy. I like a, a magnetic stud finder where I can find the screws that are in the drywall tells me for sure where it is and then I draw a plumb line. So this house though, you can kind of see where they have them. Your framing is sometimes 16 on center or 24 on center. This is 16. I can see it clear as day where that red mark is on my tape measure. So if I know I want it right here, 
I have to get one board in here and then 16 inches over. All right, so what I'm doing here, because obviously I'm gonna end up covering the line that's here with the piece of wood that's going up, I'm drawing a plumb line. That means where my bubble's in between these two lines, it's perfectly straight up and down, which means I can see where my stud is gonna be. If I wanted to, I can kind of do the same thing when I pull over. I can put it right on 16. I can make a mark. I can do the same thing, find my plumb line. I'm right there, that's where I'm gonna secure it. Okay, so before I go ahead and secure this to the wall, you can see the basic idea of what I'm gonna end up doing is because I want a little more to the right here. I'm gonna keep it on the edge on that. I'm gonna put one headlock screw in here and then I'm gonna put a level on top and actually find my level, not just follow the line. So let's go ahead and do that first. We'll put this headlock screw in on its own on the ground, then we'll secure it into the wall. So these headlock screws, they're thicker. They're lengths that you certainly need depending on which ones they are. This one is just under three inches. Comes with its own bit to help drive it in with your impact drill. So all I'm gonna do is get it started here. And I'm gonna put it about an inch off the end. That's about it. As you can see, I didn't go through yet, but it started for me that way. I don't have to try and do that while it's off the wall. So sometimes it's a little easier when you have a second hand. Right here, I'm gonna have to make it work. And there it is. Now, I'll take my level again and see how accurate my piece of wood is. I raise it up just a little bit on the right. As you can see, I'm right in the middle now. So now that that's up there, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my second screw and I can see where I drew my plumb line. I'm gonna get it in there. And that's not going anywhere. Now you can see once this is in here, the other three boards are pretty easy. If I wanted to make it lower, I would simply match it underneath. I know the level is gonna be the same, or I just stack it right on top. And I'm gonna make sure all four of these pieces are already in the wall before I go ahead and put my pull-up bar on. This is perfectly secure, not coming down. Now we're gonna put the pull-up bar on. As you can see, I'm kind of off-center from where I put the screws, which is perfectly fine. I wasn't going to make it perfectly even. So, essentially what I'm gonna do here to start to make sure I'm in the right spot, I'm gonna draw where I'm gonna put the first one. And then I'm gonna put the first one in to help me hold it up. I'll pop a level on here again get the other bottom one, so then I can work my way up without struggling holding this in place. All right, so as I said, all I'm doing is finding where I'm gonna put my first screw in at, which just cause I'm a little more comfortable right here, I'm probably doing the lower right corner. Now, just if anyone's curious, this blocking method right here, it's a good method if you wanna secure something to the wall that you're pretty sure is not gonna come down. Sometimes people miss their studs and it pulls out of drywall and they wonder why it crashed down. When I have to put up something that really needs to hold weight, if the drywall is off, I'll block behind it. I'll do this method between the studs, but the drywall is not off here, so I'm just doing it on top. But it will definitely work as long as you use these headlock screws in there. All right, now I'm gonna put my level on top. I'm just going to take my marker and level, level it up. Perfect. All 
There we go. All right, the reason that I use the marker and not just put my screw in there, because when I start to put force with the drill, this will move and it won't be exactly where I wanted it to be when it was stable. So you can see my hand has already moved, but luckily I have my mark in there. So I'm gonna take my other screw and my drill. As I said, doing this with one hand is going to be the hardest part but you can do it. There's your first one. So now that I have it in the place that I want it, obviously just temporarily secured, I just need to secure the other four holes with these headlock screws. That way it pulls it back nice and tight, um, level the way I need to be. Simple method of blocking and securing against the wall, hanging a pull-up bar or shelf or whatever you may need, but it'll hold weight. And here's another great example of blocking in our basement remodel that we finished last year. The kids' playroom area, you can see, they have the ropes to hang from, the ropes are gonna climb, the swings, everything, but it's essentially two by fours that are headlock screwed into the floor joist above, or the ceiling joist if you would look down here. And then they have everything necessary to hold their weight. Perfectly structurally sound the way it needs to be. Uh, even holds myself, though I dare not attempt it. Thank <laughs> you.